Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Since last week's video with my Magical Readathon TBR worked out quite well and a lot of people were interested in it and I think a lot of people are super excited about this readathon and we are preparing our TBRs now, I thought I'd do a list with book recommendations. I know that there's a very good list that Book Roast did where everyone just can enter his or her um, or their uh, recommendations and it's very helpful if you're struggling with one of the challenges and you're not quite sure what to read but I thought I will show you my favorite books for each of these challenges I just put this list together so some of these are my all-time favorite books these are books that I would definitely reread if I needed a book for one of these challenges so let's get into it now for Ancient Runes you're supposed to read a book that has a heart on the cover or in the title. Now I decided to go with the title for this because sometimes covers are different but usually the title is always the same so I will show you two recommendations but one is only out in German unfortunately. The first one is a children's book so I think it's great for readathons and this is The Brothers Lionheart by Astrid Lindgren. I know that this book is flawed. It has um, some kind of problematic content regarding disability but apart from that this is a book I really loved as a child and I really liked rereading it a couple of years ago so maybe if you've never read Astrid Lindgren before this is one of the shorter ones so maybe this um, might be interesting for you it follows two brothers and a kind of fantasy word um, but it starts out with them in like the 1900s no yeah yeah, the 1900s um, and both of them are actually dying at the beginning of this book and they wake up in this magical world that they have kind of like a little paradise and yeah, this is tragic and very beautiful at the same time. The other book, as I said, is only published in German. It's called Mein Geteiltes Herz and this is kind of like a memoir style book about a woman who lived um, in... Sumatra and Shanghai in the during the Second World War and I found this very interesting to read because it's you know a Second World War novel but it's not set in like the typical areas of Germany or England or something like that so I found this to be very interesting this is inspired by um, the author's life basically I must say I really struggled with this one because I don't read books that have heart in the title <laughs> it's just not a thing that I do so the next challenge is to read a book from a genre that you that is you know different from your favorite genre. So I decided to go with nonfiction because I don't really read a lot of nonfiction books that are not memoirs. So first off, I had to recommend The Rise and Fall of the Dinosaurs because I just finished this and I love dinosaurs and I think this is such a fun book. So if you're interested in dinosaurs, definitely try this. And if you don't read a lot of con uh, a lot of um, non-fiction obviously because this only works if you have like the same genres, <laughs> the fam same favorite genre that's, that I have. I can't talk today. And then the other book I chose for this is something I listened to on audio and that is Real Queer America by Samantha Allen. This was also a very interesting non-fiction book because it is a book about Samantha traveling through the United States and the red states of the United States and um, interviewing people that are on the LGBTQ spectrum. So like um, I think mainly lesbian, gay and trans people. I'm not quite sure anymore because, you know, it's been a, <laughs> I listened to this last year for the Magical Readers on, so I definitely have to give this a re-listen. But it was super interesting and is also read by the author herself, so that's always fun to listen to. Then for astronomy, you're supposed to read books at night, and so I decided to show you two books that I think are very underrated right now. So the first one is All the Truth That's In Me uh, by Julie Berry. This is a book I absolutely loved. It took me by surprise when I read it for the first time a couple of years ago. I also reread it like I think two years ago. I really love this book and I think more people need to give it a chance. This is basically a historical fiction that is kind of, it has this settlers kind of feeling to it in the United States. I'm not really good with the history of the United States so I can't really pick a time where this is set but it's basically about uh, one um, little settlement and a girl goes missing there and when she turns up again she does 
doesn't speak anymore and it's not really uh, it's somewhat about the mystery of what happened to her but since you're in her head you kind of know or you can puzzle it together but it's also about the settlement being attacked and she's the only one who can save all of them so i absolutely love this so i hope people pick this up and then the other one is Unbroken. This is edited by Marike Niekamp and this is a short story collection about um, teens with disabilities and most of the authors also have some kind of chronic Ill illness or disability. So I had some issues with this but overall all these stories were great. I think there's only one that I found a little bit weird but I absolutely loved this when I read this last year. Nobody has ever talked about it and we definitely more need more disability rap in our books. So I highly recommend this and it's um, it's also a short story so you can read one of that every night and it's a perfect book for this challenge. Now for Care of Magical Creatures you're supposed to read a book with a beak on the cover so obviously I have to recommend Nevermore. Um, this is uh, The Trials of Morrigan Crow by Jessica Townsend and obviously it has a little bird on here. I absolutely loved this last year, it's my favorite book or like my second favorite book of last year. Um, yeah, this is absolutely amazing and a great book for readathon because you can fly through it and I love everything about this book. This is about Morrigan who is supposed to die on I think her 13th, no her 11th birthday, but then something weird happens and she's whisked away by this weird man called Jupiter North to a different city where she finds out that she's so much more special than she ever thought. So yeah, absolutely love this. And then the obvious option for that is the Raven Cycle, so especially the first one, the Raven Boys, has a large beak on there because it is a picture of a raven, basically. So I love the Raven Boys series, I think it's very special um, and I loved listening to the audiobooks, like the narrator is so good, once you get into it, he's phenomenal. And um, this is all about a girl, what's her name? Mm, Blue. <laughs> Yeah, that's all about Blue and she lives in a house with clairvoyant um, women who told her that on, no, that um, her first kiss will kill the boy she kisses or something like that. So weird things are happening as soon as she meets some boys that are referred to as the Raven Boys. So the next challenge is to read books with white covers for charms. And I have two books that I've listened to on audio both, but you know, they were so great, so I think they will be a good recommendation. The first one obviously is The Hate You Give. If you have not already listened to it, I would highly recommend it. I mean, it's been everywhere, like everyone has talked about it and it is such a good book. This follows Star, who is a black girl who lives in a black community but goes to school um, where the majority of the pupils are white and it's all about her struggles in her life when her best friend, who's also a black boy, is shot by the police and yeah, everything that follows after that. Absolutely phenomenal book and I highly recommend it. And the other book I wanted to recommend is Sadie. Now Sadie is a completely different book but also an amazing audiobook, so both of these are great on audio. And Sadie follows a girl whose sister was murdered and she decides to go after the murderer because she thinks she knows who it was. Um, and at the same time you're following a podcast that, you know, is set later in time and follows the disappearance of Sadie because she just, you know, she was also a teenage girl and she just went away without telling anyone where she's going to find the murderer. So that's basically the setup of this story and it's a very, very good book as well, as I said, especially in audio. I, he I heard that some people didn't like it because it's not like a real podcast, but since I don't really like podcasts, I really like the audiobook. Then the next thing is Defense Against the Dark Arts, read a book set at the sea or the coast. Now the first book I chose for that is The Surface Breaks, so this is a reimagining of The Little Mermaid by Louise O'Neill. I really love this cover, it's so gorgeous and it's also quite a short book, so again great for readathons. And yeah, this is basically a you know, retelling of The Little Mermaid and I know that also a lot of people didn't like that so much but I enjoyed it a whole lot and I definitely think about rereading this this summer so yeah. And then the other book I also really loved that is set at the coast and the coastal themes are very strong is um, 
the house of salt and sorrows <laughs> i think it's called um, by aaron a crack and that also is such an atmospheric book i think it's better to read in the autumn but maybe you know if you have a rainy day this april this will fit in quite well i also listened to that one on audio and very much enjoyed it and it's basically also a retelling of a fairy tale but it follows the uh, it follows a couple of sisters and it's inspired by that weird fairy tale about the sisters or princesses with the dancing shoes um, but it's really so much more than that and I must say I really enjoyed it I think for a YA book it was so atmospheric and I really loved like the darker themes in it so that one was a very good book that is set at the coast as well like the coast that I like like the rough cold coast you know what I mean now for divination obviously I can't give you a recommendation because you're supposed to do that thing with your TBR and generating a random number or whatever so I'll skip that one. And then we have Herbology, so a book with M. So first of all I thought of Mercy. Mercy. <laughs> this is by Yussi Adler Olsen. This is a Scandinavian thriller and it's one of the most fascinating books I've ever read. Like I could not put this down. This is so so great. Um, this is all about a police officer. Um, he is kind of, he, he was in a shooting and it was all really bad so they kind of try to get rid of him a little bit and so he is supposed to start a department for cold cases and the first case he tries to uh, reopen is about that um, very famous uh, female politician who disappeared a couple of years back and we get also some flashbacks to her situation so we know she's still alive or she could still be alive um, and it's all about whether he can get to her and save her in the end. And this was so, so good. <laughs> like, there's problematic bits in it. It is a thriller, but it is so suspenseful. Like, this is a really thrilling thriller for me. So, yeah, that was the first one that came to my mind with M. And then another book I really liked with M last year is Moxie by Jennifer Matthew. Now this is more of a YA contemporary but it has a very strong feminist aspect because this is about a girl who is kind of fed up with all the boys at her school and the sexism that is having, uh, happening there and she decides to, she decides to um, kind of act up against it and again this was such a cool book and very special. I really enjoyed it last year. Okay, then the next um, prompt that I really struggled with is for History of Magic, a book uh, with witches or wizards in it. And the, definitely the first one that came to my mind, but it's not a good readathon book because it's very long, but that's the book that really stood out to me because of its magic system and because how the magic works in this world with the witches and wizards. The Queens of Innesleer or the sequel Lady Hotspur. They're both super thick but as I said they're so good for this magic system and I really like also the commentary on witches and wizards and the words and when someone is referred to as what and stuff like that. So yeah that's definitely a huge recommendation. Now both of these books are inspired by Shakespeare's work and I don't quite know. I think, yeah, The Queens of Innes Lear is inspired by King Lear. So that's the first book in this kind of series. They're more like somewhat connected. They're in the same world, basically. But I would not read Lady Hotspur first. I would always start with The Queens of Innes Lear. And it's basically about three sisters. And their father asks each of them who loves him most. And that kind of sets off a whole lot of weird stuff happening but this is book is so this book is so much that I can't explain it in a couple of words so I'm not even trying but it's a very good like high fantasy book and I loved it. The other book that has a witch in it and really stood out to me in a way because of how the magic works is a Strange Grace which I also read last year um, by Tessa Gretton as well. Wow! Somehow she got me with her witches. I didn't even realize that. So all of these are Tessa Gretton books. So I love her take on witches. Um, I don't know why I, didn't. I don't read witch books. I really don't. It's weird. So yeah, Strange Case. This is about um, three people. This is about a girl, Mevan, and she's the witch, and then two boys and their kind of um, relationships slash love for each other. And... Um, 
they basically live in this village and they have to sacrifice the best boy every couple of years and with the start of this book something's going wrong with this kind of deal they have with the forest and the devil that lives in this forest around the village. So that's what Strange Grace is about and I think again this is a very atmospheric, atmospheric book that I very much enjoyed. Then we have Muggle Studies and that's to read a contemporary and I'm not good with contemporary things but I think I found two very good ones. The first one is more for the adult reader I would say and that is Stay With Me by Ayobami Adebayo and this is about a couple in Nigeria. <laughs> I think I think this said Nigeria. Um, this is about a couple and they have trouble conceiving a child and it's kind of like their struggle and the family pressure and what um, comes from that. This is definitely a book that made me rage a lot, but it's also a very good book and I enjoyed reading it a whole lot. So definitely one I would consider rereading as well. And then the other one would be more the YA contemporary and for that I chose Darius the Great is Not Okay, also a book I very much enjoyed. I could say so many LGBTQ plus books to be honest, like also um, um, the books by Meredith Russo I really enjoyed as well, but I chose this one now, you know, because I had to choose one. <laughs> so um, this is by Adib Koram and this is about a boy who's going to uh, Iran for the first time, like his parents came from Iran and he's never been there before, he grew up in the United States and it's about his time there and it's really like a coming of age kind of story, you follow him through the time he's there and he makes like a first real friendship but that is tested as well and I enjoyed this book so much. It also deals with mental health because he and his father are both diagnosed with depression and it's all de depression, oh, I can't talk, I'm so sorry. And it's also about the family struggle that they have because of that. And I felt like it was such a good, solid story that, you know, had so many important things in there that I think um, that teenagers uh, need in books. So yeah, I really enjoyed this one again on audio. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, Darius the Great is not okay. It's definitely a special one on the contemporary market, I think. Then we have potions and for that we need books under 150 pages. Again I have an option for the adult readers and that is, I think it's just called And You Did Not Come Back in English by Marceline Loredan Ivans, I don't, I never know how to say her name. But this is basically about a woman who was in Auschwitz I believe and she survived and her father did not. He was there too and she is writing a long letter to him about you know the time there, how her life turned out, what all the things are that he missed out on because he did not survive that time in the Second World War. So yeah that that's just an amazing book. I think um, if you're somewhat interested in um, concentration camps and Auschwitz in particular this is definitely a must read, but it's also a very hopeful book because it shows, you know, that the world could move on from that and she also could move on from that in some way. So it's not like a very depressing, horrible book. Um, it gives you hope still. And I really liked it for that. And then for the more younger readers, I would recommend a Goosebumps book. <laughs> These are always great for readathons as well. I chose my favorite one. I think it's um, Welcome to Camp Nightmare. Yes, this is my favorite Goosebumps book, but I'm sure you have another one. Um, but these are all under 150 pages in the German copies. So yeah, this would be a great option for that as well. And lastly, for Transfiguration, we need a book that has shape-shifting in it. And that's actually one that I struggled with a lot, finding a book that I have not read, because usually I don't know if it's in there. But I have books that I've read that have shape-shifting in there and I really like. So first of all, The Bear and the Nightingale, um, the whole series has shape-shifting in it. So every single book has it. Um, I really love this series right now. I'm still in the middle of the last book, so maybe I can drag it out and, um, you know, finish that one first in April, so it counts for me. But yeah, this follows a girl called Vasya, and she's a witch too, but I didn't want to use this series for the witch prompt because I wanted to have it here. Um, 
she's a witch and she has um, the ability to see these little house ghosts and creatures that are protecting like the villages in a middle no, a medieval Russia, basically. Um, yeah, and it follows her story as, you know, the world thinks she can't really do anything because she's a woman, basically, and she's defying that. So that's the most basic promise of the series, and it's obviously so much more. I absolutely love this. I think this is one of the best YA fantasy series that has a very strong historical touch to it. The first book is a little bit slower, but the second book is so action-packed, like, so good and the third book I have only just started but the beginning of the third book is so crazy as well and these the stakes are very high I can promise you that so definitely give this series a try and the last book I want to recommend to you that has shape-shifting in it is My Lady Jane this is the first book in the Lady Chaney's series um, but these are also only companion novels it's a hilarious book and it follows the story of Lady Jane Grey who was Queen of England for like, I don't know, eight days or something like that. Um, she was mixed up in all the business after Henry VIII died and yeah, it's just so much fun. Um, so basically her husband is a shapeshifter but he can't control it. So he is a horse at day and a man at night, I think. So yeah, as you can imagine, this is a little bit of... <laughs> A weird um, situation with a husband who doesn't exist a day. He's just a horse and he really likes being a horse too. So yeah, I really love that book. I think it's so hilarious and still if you, you know, see through the metaphor, it is so interesting to think about that story. So I absolutely recommend this first book. I think it's way stronger than the second one and yeah, one of my absolutely favorite books. An honorable mention would be Cersei, but yeah, I felt like My Lady Jane was even better. So again, I listened to that one on audio and I really enjoyed that. Okay, that would be all the books. I'm sorry I was stumbling over my words like that. But you know, being stuck at home is getting to my head, <laughs> obviously. Um, I hope you found some books that maybe are interesting to you and even though you might not read them for the Tweedeson, maybe you can check them out later. I know that right now it's difficult to get new books from the library or many people don't like to order books right now because obviously it's a safe risk that you don't need to take. But if you were looking for a good recommendation, maybe for an audiobook or an ebook, I think these are all fantastic and I hope you um, will have a great time no matter what you read for this readathon because yeah, it's gonna be so much fun. <laughs> so I hope you liked this. If you did leave a like or a nice comment, I always appreciate those. And if you subscribe, I will talk to you soon. Bye.